Uh, kia ora everybody, good morning. It has been a very big night for New Zealanders across the country, but particularly in the Upper North Island. Uh, I want to acknowledge the uh, situation that New Zealanders have been waking up to this morning. A lot of families displaced, uh, a lot of homes without power, uh, extensive damage done uh, across the country. It will take us a wee while to get a handle on exactly what's happened. Um, we, uh, I want to acknowledge those families that are currently functioning without power and in some cases without communications. Um, we'll be working as quickly as we can with the relevant uh, agencies uh, to make sure that we're getting the power back on, to make sure we're restoring communications as quickly uh, as we possibly can. I want to take a moment to acknowledge the incredible work that's being done by our first responders around the country. Uh, fire and emergency uh, had an enormous number of call-outs last night uh, and I want to acknowledge that in many cases they were attended by volunteers. Uh, the volunteer response across the country has been a phenomenal one. We've seen community groups coming together to support their fellow Kiwis who have been in need uh, and I really want to thank them. Uh, I'm here today, uh, this morning, at the Trust Stadium where it is a good example of the sort of community-driven response that we are seeing. Uh, we're seeing the community coming together, volunteers, making sure that they are supporting people who have been displaced, uh, supporting people who are in need. I had the opportunity to speak just before uh, with some of the families from Muriwai who had, uh, were evacuated uh, in the middle of the night. Uh, they uh, were indicating they had felt incredibly well supported through that process. Obviously a very traumatic thing to happen uh, in the middle of the night uh, and they have been very well supported here uh, and throughout the response. And we'll continue to work with those community groups to make sure that we're providing them with as much support as we can so that they can uh, provide support to the communities that have been affected. Uh, I am hoping to get back to Wellington later on today uh, where I'll get a briefing from the team at NEMA who have now stood up the full national emergency response. Uh, we'll then be able to provide a fuller update, uh, including some of the facts and figures that I know people will be looking for uh, later on today and potentially early this evening. Uh, people will be aware that a national state of emergency has been declared uh, and that means that we'll be throwing everything at this to make sure we're providing as much support to the response as possible. Uh, we have the Defence Force on the ground now, uh, already providing a lot of logistical support, uh, helping with evacuations, helping to keep essential supplies moving, uh, and in due course helping with the clean-up uh, when we get to that point. Uh, Defence Force will provide more support uh, as appropriate, and of course we will have other arms of, of government ready to go. Um, many of them have been working around the clock for some time now. Uh, I want to acknowledge that this extreme weather event, one of the biggest that we have seen in recent times, probably the biggest that we have seen in recent times, comes hot on the heels of other extreme uh, weather events that we have seen. And uh, that means that for our, our first responders, for our emergency support agencies, uh, it is a particularly uh, tiring time, a particularly stressful time. Uh, so I want to again, on behalf of all New Zealanders, reiterate our thanks uh, to all those who are working around the clock to support those who need that extra support. I'm now happy to open up for questions. Look, this is very significant. The fact that we've declared a national state of emergency uh, means that the statutory threshold for a national state of emergency has been reached. And that means that the, the local response needs additional support nationally in terms of being able to manage it. Um, it's a, it is a pretty high threshold for a national state of emergency to be declared. So the fact that we have done that um, shows just how big the situation is that we're dealing with. Are you satisfied with the timing of the The Minister for Emergency Management and I have been getting updates every four hours over the last 24 hours or so. Um, obviously overnight it's difficult in the dark to find out exactly what's happening. At first light this morning, as soon as the extent of the disruption and the damage became clear, advice was provided to the Minister um, and therefore through the Minister to me that a national state of emergency uh, could, could, should be declared and we acted on that immediately. So, 
it, it's still too early to get an, an a, a count on the number of people displaced to the number of, number of potential injuries. Um, I do want to acknowledge fire and emergency though, uh, dealing with a situation where they have uh, at least one volunteer missing. Um, that is a really um, a really challenging time. I want to extend our our support to the relevant families. Uh, and to the whole team at Fire and Emergency, who will be feeling this whilst they're continuing to do their work as well. One of the challenges with Gisborne at the moment is that communications in and out of Gisborne are very limited. So we're working to try and assess and get as much information about this, the situation on the ground as we can. And that has proven to be very difficult in the last few hours. Um, <clears throat> we, we will have people on the ground there, um, making sure that they're providing as much support as they can. Um, the situation around the slash is, you know, clearly there'll be an opportunity, I think, for us to have a good look at that. Um, and, and that will include looking backwards as well as looking forwards. Right at the moment, I think we just need to get, get through the next 24 to 48 hours, but I think clearly we will need to have a look back um, and see what happened, why it happened, and make sure that we're capturing any relevant lessons from that. There is legislation before the House at the moment, the Natural and Built Environments uh, Bill, which is working its way through the House at the moment, that will place a much greater emphasis on natural hazards when it comes to things like deciding where we build. Um, that is something where I think we've got a long history of perhaps poor past decisions in New Zealand that we're confronting right now. Um, it's not that helpful for people who are up to their uh, waists in water to be having that debate right at the moment, but it absolutely is one. Uh, that we need to have as a country and we need to look at the sustainability um, of some of the places where we have built previously. We know that um, you know there is a significant mental health impact of events like this and that comes on top of other recent natural disasters and then of course the COVID-19 response uh, and all of the other things that we've dealt with as a country over the last few years. We've We've dealt with everything. Um, if you think about the last sort of decade and a half or so, we've had everything from earthquakes, natural disasters, volcanic eruptions, weather events. Um, it, it is a lot. And for some people, it will, it, that, that, you know, those things accumulate and, and the, the mental health impact could be a significant one. We're very aware of that as a government and uh, we'll be making sure that we provide as much mental health support as we can. We're very aware that there's a lot of families already in financial distress because of the, uh, the global economic situation that people are, are tackling at the moment. Uh, it'll take us a few days to really kind of get a handle on how, that, how, uh, how and how many um, families have been affected by these extra events of the last, uh, the last few days when it comes to the extreme weather. And that will include working with the insurance companies to get a good handle on how much of the damage will be covered by insurance and how much won't be. Um, it will include working with all of the relevant community agencies to make sure that we're supporting those most vulnerable whānau who won't have some of those other supports that many of us would rely on in these sorts of circumstances. At the highest level, the, the first thing it does is allows us to get a, a better coordination of the response across the country. With an event of the size and the scale that we have seen in the last 24 hours, what we have to do is make sure that we're dealing with the most pressing needs across the country as quickly as we can and that we're getting the resources to the right place. So a national coordination function, which is now kicked in um, as a result of declaring a national state of emergency, will make sure that we're getting energy to where it's most needed, most urgently. Uh, then of course we will activate a lot of other support. I do want to be clear though um, that we've had a lot of nationally uh, focused support being provided to support the local response teams. Declaring a national state of emergency there lifts the coordination up a level and it means that we'll now be coordinating across the country. Uh, I haven't, uh, I, I'm not aware of that at this point. I'm sure that there will have been certainly messages of support. I had a, a phone call, a pre-planned phone call this morning um, 
with Prime Minister Sunak from the UK, um, and the first thing that he did in that call was to ex you know, uh, express the UK's support to the people of New Zealand as we're going through um, what is a, clearly a very challenging period at the moment caused by the weather. And I imagine that that sentiment will, will have been echoed by leaders around the world. Um, not all of those messages will have made it to me yet, but I'm sure in due course they will. Uh, I've spoke to him uh, over the weekend around the preparations and made sure that he has had all of the support. I haven't spoken to him this morning, but I have spoken to him over the weekend to make sure that they have been getting from, uh, from central government the support that they need, uh, and I'll continue to keep in touch with him. He's certainly got my number as well, so that if anything comes up where he's looking for extra support from central government, uh, he will, you know, I'll, I will endeavour to provide that. We will do what, what we need to do in order to support New Zealanders through this. Our focus right now is on the immediate response. It's on making sure that people have a roof over their head, that they have a meal, um, that their families are well, well cared for. Uh, that's, the, that's the immediate focus. The recovery effort is something that we will absolutely be placing front and centre of the government's programme over the next few weeks and months. Um, we know that this won't be an overnight recovery. It's going to take a while. Uh, some people will be displaced from their homes for an extended period of time, for example, and we'll need to support them through that. Businesses will continue to feel the, the tail of this for some time, and we'll need to support them through that as well. Um, we'll work out in the next few days and weeks how best to do that. Yeah, so like I said, I've spoken to some here at the, the Trust Stadium. They felt very well supported through that process. Having said that, they haven't had a lot of sleep. Um, it's been a pretty rough night for them. They'll be wanting to get some rest. Um, and, of course, they have the uncertainty of not knowing what's going to happen next. In many cases, they won't know what's happened to their homes after they've left their homes. So they've got a pretty uncertain uh, period of time ahead of them. And I think all New Zealanders who are hunkered down at home, potentially watching this at the moment, um, will be uh, wrapping them with as much support as they possibly can from afar, um, because I think we could all imagine how we would feel in those circumstances. No, look, they are feeling very well supported, um, and, and I'm really encouraged by that. They're feeling uh, very well cared for, but of course, um, they're displaced, and so there's all of the anxiety that goes with that as well. But um, there, I haven't seen any anger or anything like that bubbling <coughs> over. I think people generally accept that this is an extreme weather event. Um, a lot of preparation has gone into making sure that we were ready for this, um, so that where people had to evacuate, they would be well supported. Um, certainly, that's been the case here in Auckland. Of course, we'll get a better handle on what's happening around the rest of the country in the next few days. Prime Minister, what about you? What do your nights look like? Did you sleep at all, or were you up taking photos and monitoring everything around you? A little bit of both. I did get some sleep overnight because obviously I was expecting a big day ahead and I wanted to make sure that I was ready for that. Um, but I have been getting regular updates. As I said, I've been getting updates from the NEMA team every sort of four to six hours on whether a, a state of national emergency was going to be required. Um, and I got up reasonably early this morning again to try and assess the damage. It takes a wee while after daybreaks for us to actually get a handle on what's happening because, um, like it or not, you can have the best technology in the world, but until the sun comes up and you can actually see what's going on, um, there's a limited amount that you can do and that you can know overnight. Uh, obviously, air uh, support and air travel is quite challenging at the moment, given the high levels of winds that we're experiencing. Even, even here, you can hear um, outside that um, there's, a, there's a very strong wind out there um, at the moment, and that will probably be limiting the amount of support that can be supplied by air. The Defence Force, the Air Force, I know, have been on standby. They are ready to go uh, at the point that they are required. Defence Force are providing a lot of land support at the moment, so they've got their large vehicles out there helping with the evacuation, helping to move supplies around as necessary. Uh, and there's actually naval support being provided at the moment. Uh, I believe that um, uh, one, of the, uh, one of our ships is out there at the moment trying to find a, a yacht um, that is adrift at sea. Um, so the Defence Force is, is there, it's ready, and it's deploying its assets as appropriate. Uh, Parliament's business committee is meeting at lunchtime, so I'll, I'll let the 
um, the relevant, I, I'm no longer as involved in those discussions as I used to be, um, so I'll let the relevant um, ministers and MPs, um, the speaker, um, communicate the decisions of the business committee. But clearly it is not unusual when, when emergencies happen for Parliament's programme to be disrupted. Not as yet, no. Yeah. Um, I, as Prime Minister, of course, I don't make that decision unilaterally. That decision is made by Parliament's Business Committee. My understanding, I think, is the meeting is, is uh, sometime around midday. It might be half past 12. Um, and then they'll be able to communicate the decision around Parliament's... The, well, the, the effect this weather is going to have on Parliament's sitting programme after that. Bearing in mind, of course, that a lot of members of Parliament haven't actually been able to get to Wellington for Parliament sitting uh, because of the extreme weather we've seen in the last 48 hours. Um, look, it's, it's kind of an hour by hour review at the moment. Um, I have some plans in place potentially to get to Wellington today because I, obviously I'd like to be able to touch base now with the national emergency response. Um, but in the event that I can't do that, I'm sure that there will be plenty, uh, plenty else that I will be able to do uh, here in Auckland or potentially in other parts of the country, depending on where, where I end up. Um, look, I would just ask all MPs, wherever they are in the country, to just follow guidance around safe travel. Um, I acknowledge they'll want to be with their constituencies and providing support in their constituencies where they can. And where it's safe for them to travel in order to do that, then yes, I think that is appropriate. But just follow the, the, the travel guidance that's being issued at the moment. There's a lot of disruption on the roading network in particular, um, so just make sure that they're, um, that they're, they're leading by example in terms of you know, following the guidance that's being issued to others. Um, I don't know. I was um, scheduled to meet this afternoon as well, and I'm not sure. I, I suspect that's not going to go ahead. But um, uh, you know, obviously, uh, we'll just uh, we'll, we'll see um, how that unfolds. But of course, uh, she is very welcome here in New Zealand, regardless of the extreme weather that we're experiencing. All right, I might wrap up there, but we'll, I will endeavour to provide a, a fuller update later in the day. I'd ask all businesses and all employers to be responsible in what they're asking of their staff. Now there are some essential businesses that will be asking their staff to come back to work, including so that they can keep the essential supply lines open. Food, for example. People will still need to be able to buy food. Um, so those, those decisions are best made by businesses. But I would just ask all businesses to be responsible in the decisions that they're taking. Thanks everybody.